Regular viewers of my channel realize I don't usually discuss political issues on my channel. Uh, every great once in a while I'll have a rant that may have some sort of political issue in it, but I really try to stay away from politics in general on my channel as a main theme because this is a gun channel, it's not a political channel. Now there are a couple of questions I seem to keep getting again and again and again, and I really don't understand why I keep getting these questions, but I do. Uh, one is legalization of marijuana, and the other is gay marriage. Uh, now, I usually, I will answer these questions in private, things like that, but I don't make videos about them. Uh, now, the other day, someone asked me these questions in a way that made it kind of gun related to me. They asked me, why can I feel like uh, some things are state issues and some things are federal issues? And feel that some things the federal government has a right to enforce and sometimes they don't. So, since they tied it into that kind of that gun related a a thing, I will explain why I feel the way I do about each issue and how I feel they differ from the gun rights issue. First, I'll talk about legalized marijuana. First, I'll state my uh, stance on it. I am 100% in favor of legalized marijuana. Uh, I'm not a pot smoker. I don't smoke pot. Uh, I don't even drink alcohol. I'm as teetotaling as you get. There are no, uh, I don't even take prescription drugs. Uh, I don't even like to take Tylenol or anything like that. I like to feel your body can defend its own self. Uh, and every time you put something into it to help it, you weaken it. I only take drugs uh, in, in severe emergencies, uh, like allergic reactions, things like that. But I usually try to shy away from drugs. And that includes recreational drugs, including alcohol. So I'm not a user, but I do believe 100% in its legalization. Uh, we have two doctors and several nurses in our family, actually three doctors and several nurses in our family. and. Uh, they will all tell you the medicinal values of marijuana are amazing. Uh, it's just so helpful. It's cheap. It's efficient. It's just a great drug for a lot of people, especially cancer sufferers, uh, people with vision issues, uh, just tons and tons of issues you can list, uh, chronic illnesses, that it really does help improve the quality of life. Uh, so I really am in favor of it for that use. And if you look at it from a recreational standpoint, it's far less harmful than, uh, than alcohol. Uh, in fact, if you take... Uh, possession charges out of the mix and look at it as far as relationships to crime. Marijuana has very little relationship to crime other than the marketing of because it's an illegal substance. So if it was legal and it was, uh, there would be almost no crime as far as associated with marijuana. Alcohol, however, has tons of crime associated with it. So it's just, it's so much safer than alcohol, but people will somehow think that alcohol is okay. Now you have to look at why is marijuana illegal anyway. Well, uh, marijuana is illegal because Puritan factions of society allowed themselves to get worked into a frenzy by corporate interests who were trying to protect their own profits. Uh, marijuana was illegalized not because it's a danger, but because it was a threat to certain industries such as cotton industry, petroleum industry, things like that. Uh, so they allowed these Puritan faction of the society, they, they targeted the Puritan faction of society and got them all worked up about the evils of marijuana and haven't got it passed to make it illegal. But why I feel the difference between gun rights and the state rights to legalize marijuana is because legalizing marijuana there is no constitutional reason that it should not be legal. Uh, so I believe every state should have the right to vote. If you want to make it legal, make it legal. If you don't, don't. And I don't think the federal government has any constitutional grounds to step into that. Now they'll use interstate, uh, uh, you know, the, the whole interstate trafficking rules and all this stuff to try to get involved. Uh, Make it to where they can only sell it in their state if they grow it in that state. Fine with me. But in other words, just keep the federal government out of it. The federal government has no constitutional right to be involved in legalized marijuana. I think that should be a state issue. It should be up to every single state to do it. The states that do it are reaping great rewards from it. Not only are the citizens reaping great rewards because they are able to, to uh, obtain a cheap and efficient medication, uh, but they are also reaping rewards financially because it's really bolstering their state economies because it's bringing in a lot of money and it's really helping private industry. So it's a good thing. I can't think of a negative thing about it and it's, there's no constitutional reason for it. So state rights, as far as I'm concerned, and the federal government should keep their hands out of it. Okay, now gay marriage. Uh, now, I am not pro-gay marriage. Uh, I'm not saying that in a way that's hateful or mean or discriminatory or anything like that. I just simply believe that marriage is the property of the church. It is a religious institution. Uh, so, when it's property of the church, I don't feel the state or federal government, since there's a separation of church and state, I think that goes both ways. I don't think the federal or state government can tell any religious organization who they have to bestow that honor upon. Uh, they can choose who they want to issue marriage certificates to and who they don't. So, if the Catholics say, nope, no gay marriage, 
fine, that's their right. And then if the Methodists turn around and say, yes, gay marriage, fine, that's their right. I'm not involved in any church, so I'm not going to tell them how they can do their business. And I don't believe the state or federal government has a right to tell them how to do their private business either. Now, where it gets tricky is once one church decides they are, say Catholics aren't, Methodists are, then the real constitutional issue comes down to states shouldn't have the right to choose which ones they accept. They either have the right to say, yes, we do accept religious uh, unions, or no, we don't accept religious unions. And that would be up to every state. Yes, we do, or no, we don't. So they can choose to accept all or none. So if any, even if one church in your state decides, yes, we are going to do uh, gay marriages, well, then the, the, church has to, the state has to accept, okay, we can either accept all religious unions or we can accept none. We can't discriminate. We can't single out some religions that are right and some religions that are wrong. That would be unconstitutional. That's where you would run into a constitutional issue. Uh, but also I believe that in uh, opposition to that, you should also have an alternative to marriage. Uh, that means every person, gay, straight, whatever, should have the right to go down to their local municipality, their local courthouse, and say, we want to become a, a legal union, but we're not religious and we don't want to be involved in a religious union. So they should have a, 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 an option that is equal to marriage in the eyes of the law, that is purely a legal union given by the states, uh, like civil unions, you know, whatever you want to call it. That shouldn't just be for, well, gay people can have civil union instead of marriage. Well, no, marriage is up to the churches. Now, the state and the federal would have to give these civil unions for tax purposes, other reasons, you know, inheritorships, things like that, uh, insurances. So, once that is an option for gay or straight, well, then everything's equal. And the states can say, okay, this is legal. So, and then I guess some states could even say, we don't recognize any type of union if that was their choice. But, as far as the federal government would go for taxes, the federal government would offer the civil union option. That way, everyone has a chance. Uh, if you're religious, and that you're gay and their church won't marry you, well, that's a, that's a problem between you and your church. That's not a problem between you and your country. And I, and I don't want to be involved in a problem between you and your church. You chose to be a part of that church. You're not required to be a part of that church. So, no, I don't agree with uh, gay marriage because I don't believe in forcing churches to do anything they don't want to do, uh, and to, other than, you know, following the basic laws. I don't believe in making them fulfill certain requirements to make everybody happy because no club is going to make everybody happy. So, uh, don't believe in enforcing it. I believe in churches having the right to choose who they want to bestow it upon. And then once they do, I believe the states have a right to accept all or nothing. So that's my uh, standpoint on that. And how that differs from Second Amendment, once again, there's no constitutional guarantee to marriage. So, if the state wants to make civil unions and marriages uh, have effect on how you pay taxes, things like that, that's their right to do that. But it has to be fair and equitable in every way to every person. So, government should keep their hands out of marriage. So there you have my opinions on these topics, and you can see where I think they differ from gun rights issues. Uh, so no, I'm not a hypocrite like a few people have accused me, especially the person who asked me yesterday. It's not hypocritical to think that the government has the right to step in in some places and not in others. Because the big difference between those two issues and the gun rights issues is I believe the states have a right to do most things as long as they don't violate the federal constitution. So when you say uh, gay marriage, legalized marijuana, there is nothing in the constitution that deals with those topics, so that is a state issue. Now when you start talking about gun rights and how you want to restrict them, well, there's a second amendment in the federal constitution. So states do not, the one right states do not have, and I will explicitly go on record and say they do not have this right, and that is to vi uh, violate the federal constitution in any way. Uh, so, states do not have the right to be discriminatory against individuals based on anything. Every individual has the right, you know, to uh, pursue ha the pursuit of happiness, to prosperity, all these things that the Constitution have written into it. And I'm sorry, I'm one of these people that believes the preamble of the Constitution is just as big a part of the Constitution as any other part of it. It's part of the document. So, but you can't just widen it out to this vague thing and say, well, everything that makes somebody happy is they have a right to do. No. The Constitution then goes on to clarify what things people have specific rights to and what things, things they don't and what powers the federal government has. So if it doesn't violate the federal Constitution, states can do pretty much what they want as far as I'm concerned, as long as it's done by a popular vote uh, and as long as it doesn't violate human rights. So 
if they got equal opportunities, sometimes equal but separate is, is, is real. I mean, you can say, oh, it sounds awful because people associate it with uh, uh, racial issues. Well, it's not, as long as you're not violated, separating that on, on race and things like that, sometimes separate but equal is right. I mean, when you go to the gym, there's a men's shower and a women's shower. It's pretty much separate but equal, and you accept that. You know, so don't let terminology screw with your head and make you think things are bad just because they sound like they might be separate but equal. As long as people have the same means to get the same things, then it's nothing wrong with that. You can't force every single club, like you can't accept a women's group to accept men uh, if they want to be a women's group. Uh, you can't accept an all men's polo team to take women if they're an all men's polo team. You know, just things like that just bother me a little bit. When people think that everything has to be integrated and equally, that's not the way the world works. It can't be like that. So as long as states aren't violating the federal constitution, then I think they're okay. Now with the Second Amendment, like I said, that's a federally guaranteed constitutional right, so there's nothing uh, hypocritical about saying states do not have any say in that whatsoever, but they do have a say in other issues.